Hi guys, it's time for Q&A. So question number one, what is the one thing you should look for when purchasing a camera? When you first get a new camera, which functions should you familiarize yourself with? Okay, so I'm gonna answer the second part of that question first. So the functions you should familiarize yourself with are white balance, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. As far as what is the number one thing you should take into consideration, I would say take into consideration where and how you're gonna be shooting. If you're someone who's looking into getting into vlogging or doing some sort of travel photography, I think it would benefit you to buy something that's compact, lightweight, that it's easy to take with you everywhere. So you could go on a site like Amazon or B&H and look through their compact cameras. Another option is you could always just look at leveling up your phone. You might wanna get different attachments, like if you're trying to be like a vlogger or something, you might wanna get a mic or a light that fits on the top of your phone. On the other hand, if you're looking to shoot really kind of glamorous studio photography, you might want to go with a DSLR. I use the Canon 5D, but I know a lot of people like the Sony a7R. Question number two, what type of lenses do you use for different photos, e.g. portraits, YouTube videos, action, scenery, etc.? So a lot of this will be personal preference. For portraits, I like a 24 millimeter or 35 millimeter but a lot of people like a 50 millimeter. You can look at different examples by just Googling 50 millimeter lens examples, 24 millimeter lens examples, and see what kind of look appeals to you. As far as action, the Canon 70 to 200 millimeter is somewhat of a standard. Um, so you can check that out and check out comparable lenses. For landscape photography, a lot of people like a wider, lens, so that's gonna be something like a 16 millimeter or 24 millimeter. And as far as shooting YouTube videos, I'm just gonna be straight with you guys. I'm just shooting this with my phone. It's iPhone XR. Question number three, what f-stop settings are used for what purpose? So f-stop or aperture is used to control the amount of light coming into the camera. And it is an inverse relationship, meaning the smaller number lets in more light. So f1.4 lets in more light than f22. In general, you can say that if you are in a darker environment, you are gonna use a smaller aperture. And if you are in a really bright environment, you will use a higher aperture. So small number, more light, large number, less light. Question number four, how and when do you use light reflectors? How and when you use them is really a personal choice, um, but they're typically used to fill in shadows. So for example, if you were taking a portrait of somebody and you had light coming in from this direction on this side of their face, you could put a reflector right here and it would bounce some of that light onto the shadowy part of someone's face. It is totally optional. This is one of those things that's not everyone uses them, but it's a tool that you can play around with. I see a lot of people that shoot portraits outside using this. So you're just bouncing sunlight onto someone's face and it's just a great way to maximize natural lighting. Question number five, what are the different types of lighting you use for what types of photos, e.g. in a studio, outside, etc.? So a lot of this just comes down to logistics. If you're doing street photography and you're walking around and taking pictures of people in public, you're probably just gonna have a flash that goes on top of your camera. I mean, logistically, that makes the most sense. However, if you are shooting in a studio, you might have strobes. Strobes, you can just think of them as big flashes and they do really powerful bursts of lighting so you can get completely even lighting. And for video, I like to use soft boxes. So it is a big box of light and it gives a diffused effect. Question number seven, how do you set up lights for videos? So I am sitting in front of a large window and then I have a soft box on both sides of me. Light behind the camera, two lights to the side of me. That's the way we do it. Question number eight, how do you know what true color is? So when people refer to true color, they're just referring to a photo, the color in a photo or video looking the same as it does with your eyes, the natural color. That being said, 
there's a lot of people that do creative color grading. Their images might have like a purplish tone to them or a pink tone to them. Personally, I like to have my whites look actually stark white and I'll usually desaturate my whites to get that effect and make sure my camera is white balanced. One thing I've noticed on Instagram is right now it seems like warm tones are really trendy and so you'll notice someone's feed has like an amber sort of look to it and even the whites are a little bit amber and I think it's really pretty and I just love seeing what people create. Question number nine, what is the best way to create white balance? So the best way is to just learn the white balance settings in your camera. And there's a bunch of videos on YouTube already about white balance. I'll go ahead and link to them below. Easy peasy. Question number 10, how do you create a blurred background? To create the blurred effect in camera, what you want to do is you want to have a low aperture number. Remember we talked earlier about aperture and a small aperture is going to have a more blurry effect than a large aperture. So for example, F2 is gonna be blurrier than F16. So again, you wanna to go to the low number if you wanna create more blur. Okay, cool, thank you for your questions. If any of you have more questions, you can DM me on Instagram or on TikTok. And I actually just got on TikTok last week and it's really fun. So come say hi to me there if you're on that platform. And I don't know when you're going to watch this, but I'm filming it during the coronavirus outbreak. So I just want to say I hope you're staying healthy. And if you want to be productive during this time, go ahead and be productive. But if you also just want to re relax and get some rest in, then that's totally fine too. So just you do you, rest if you want to and um, I will talk to you guys soon. Okay, bye, love you.